The week in wrestling has ended for most of us, and TLC is coming up this Sunday. What did WWE do on Raw to make you want to buy this pay-per-view or even the network? Did WWE do anything on SmackDown Live to make you give a shit anymore? And what about the comments that are going on between Cody Rhodes and Roman Reigns on top of everybody and their mother walking out of WWE? We'll get into that and more tonight as we... Listening to Breaking Down the Ring, the most inappropriate pro wrestling podcast ever. We are your ring crew. Armbar Joe. Smitey. Oh, Callie. (laughs) And me, the all Mikey one, Mikey. Uh, Yeah. Z uh, out of action again today. Uh, Hopefully we'll have his picks for our pro wrestling scorecards coming up uh, to talk about during the show. If not, no worries. We'll get that up. Plus his special picks that he is using this month. uh, Well, this uh, half a month for the TLC pay-per-view is uh, he's going to be doing something special, maybe with a certain thing that just came out recently. You know, we'll get into that. Uh, We'll have that video up there for that. Hopefully really soon on the YouTube. Thank you so much for listening to Breaking Down the Ring, the most inappropriate pro wrestling podcast. We are coming to you from Podcast Detroit Studios in lovely Royal Oak, Michigan. If you're listening live, make sure you subscribe to us on iTunes as well as Google Play Podcasts. You can do that too. Subscribe. Um, if you're listening to us on podcast, make sure you tune in live every Wednesday at 9.15 Eastern Standard Time at night because then maybe we'll have you call in and have a conversation. Ladies and gentlemen, make sure you follow us on all of our social media, facebook.com slash BDRcast, Twitter at BDRcast, Instagram, Periscope at BDRcast, and officially up and mobile is our Pro Wrestling Tees shop. Two shirts up there, the regular BDR logo, as well as well as our own exclusive be an appropriate shirt. Go to ProWrestlingTees.com slash BDRCast to get all of your Breaking Down the Ring merchandise. Now, also, folks, this stuff is not free, all right? It costs us money to do this show if you think we're that good, if you think we're funny, if you think it's hilarious that Callie smacks herself in the face Ow. with her headphones as she's putting them on her head. It's not what happened. It's pretty hysterical. I thought it was funny. It was even worse. What? <laughs> oh. Uh, make sure you go to our Patreon. Uh, Patreon is a brand new website, or not, maybe not brand new, but for new for us, where you can uh, do monthly subscriptions to how good you think you are. You know, dollar, five dollars, ten dollars, twenty five dollars, whatever you guys want to give a month. We really appreciate that. Go to patreon.com slash BDRcast. That's P A T R E O N dot com slash BDRcast. BDR cast. Enough with the plugs. Let's get into some news in wrestling this week. Um, boys and girl, so many people are walking out of WWE. It's like Monday Night Raw's the walkout show. You know, I want to give you up. Everybody's giving her up. Everybody's letting them down. Everybody's walking out and deserting them. So like whoever posted that on our page, I say thank you for the Neville thing. Right? And, uh, yeah, someone put that. That was a, a good friend of mine, Nick. So here's what's going on. Last week, we kind of got into a little bit before we went into our red, uh, wrestling etiquette uh, segment. And... Neville walked out last Monday from Raw. Apparently, very frustrated with everything. Uh, I Coming from WrestlingInc.com, here uh, they use the source SI.com, which, uh, if I'm not mistaken, Sports it's... Uh, yeah, uh, but I'm, try- I'm trying to think of the, the uh, author. 
is Justin Bruce, Verlander. Not Verlander. That's the um, the guy uh, that does the wrestling news for Sports Illustrated. I'm looking it up right now. Ah, oh, man. Crap. I feel stupid because I had his name and now I'm just blanking on it, which sucks. But uh, yeah, Justin Barrasso. Sorry. There we go. So uh, from him. Uh, they talked about how his status is up in the air right now because he allegedly walked out of Raw last month, which is broken by the Twitter handle at WrestleVotes, I want to say. Um, I, yes, it's at, at WrestleVotes. They, they broke out. They never left um, and walked out. Apparently, some of the things that are going on is he's actually been upset with WWE since January. A lot of stuff. Uh, the WWE DVD, when his match with Austin Aries was put onto the pre-show, it cut a lot of his revenue that he's supposed to see uh, from the biggest selling wrestling DVD of the year. Uh, he was, you know, a little upset about the whole Enzo thing, but apparently post this Enzo thing, they didn't really have anything set for him to go. You know, and uh, he was a little upset about that. His pay scales, he's a little angry about just for the simple fact that when Austin Aries left in the six weeks time that Aries had been gone, Neville had made less money than Aries did on the indies. And he's not finding that as, you know, that's a good thing, especially for the Cruiserweight champion, so on and so forth. Um, and then he took a shot at that. He hmm? took a shot on Twitter about it. Who did? Austin Aries. He said over the last six months, he's made more on the indies than he did uh, in the Biggest wrestling company out there. Well, yeah, and we've talked about that. If you're a name and you're somebody that's established, we've already said that. That's the reason the Bucks, Omega, Cody, all of them weren't signed to any uh, specific wrestling promotion. I mean, at least until now with Cody, you know, they're, they're all signed to, well, Omega's New Japan. Omega's on New Japan. The Bucks are signed. Actually, they have a, one of those working contracts with both New Japan and. Right. New as Japan. And that's what Cody, I believe, signed as well recently. But. Again, making their own schedule, doing what they want. They're making more money on the indies than WWE is willing to shell out. I get it. And they're worth it. At this yeah, point. I get it. I mean, we have all their, you know, WWE's cut pyro, not because they weren't making money, but because they didn't make as much money as they wanted to make, you know? They cut uh, the purple ropes, thank God. So this Monday. Allegedly, another superstar walked out. And I say allegedly because there's no confirmed reports that this superstar walked out. However, she was giving her, given a leave of absence. Uh, again, WrestleVotes broke it. Uh, they put out a tweet at uh, 4 p.m. Monday the 12th. No, I'm sorry. Uh, he's the 8th. What? This is weird. Fake news. Uh, no. Uh, 10... F- 11 a.m. on this uh, yesterday, on the 17th, they wrote uh, uh, Nia Jax was the one to allegedly walk out. That she didn't appear. Uh, and again, they even said, to be clear, never said Nia walked. I was following up on a rumor I heard it's possible she did, just can't confirm it. Um, also, they're talking about uh, pro wrestling sheets talking about that um, she, she'd been granted a leave of absence and that apparently the reason that she has to has left as well is money not being paid enough and the arc of her character. And I mean, look, we even talked about it all of a sudden her and Alexa were enemies. And then she was back in the room with her. You know, it was, it, it was a weird thing that we were all just like, are we just it supposed to dumb, forget? Right? Yeah. And stuff that we've all said, the raw has had some weird fucking writing. Um, Joe, what are your thoughts on the on Neville and the Naya walkouts? I'm not really sure about Naya. Um, I don't even know. I mean, with her, I don't even know if it's company related or she might be having personal issues. Neville, uh, I understand it. It's basically like Austin Aries, rinse, repeat. It's basically the same thing for the same reasons. Um, JR always used to say when someone uh, leaves like this it's usually over one of two things cash or creative or both and uh, <laughs> with uh, not getting royalties from the Wrestlemania DVD with their match being on the pre-show and them not having any plans to him after losing uh, them wanting him to lose again to Enzo Amore I can see the frustration especially because uh, he's pigeon, uh, pigeonholed into the 205 
division, which means, you know, I mean, other than Enzo a couple times because of his mic skills, uh, main eventing a Raw, those cruiserweights are never going to main event any any pay per views or, you know, they're those cruiserweights are never going to get a shot at the IC title, the mm-hmm. US title, let alone a universal title or a heavyweight or a WWE title. So I understand it. I think he, you know, puts more value on himself than maybe he thinks that the company does. So, you know, his frustration led him to do what he did. And it's his, he's been there. You know, he came back. Uh, from an injury, got himself hugely over in a division that he was the only thing. You know, um, WWE has found more um, stock in Enzo, which is crazy. But the bottom line is the it dude works. is the dude has the mic skills of any of the greats. I mean, let, let's face it. Um, Neville will do just fine on the indies. Mm-hmm. I mean, he, I think he's already been invited to be in the Bullet Club by the Young Bucks. Yeah, when the first Monday where it was announced, I they mean, posted a thing with he'll, his He'll hash- probably yeah. just go back to being Pac, which what he wrestled as before in the indies. And he'll have no problems getting booking and getting uh, paid well for his bookings. Smitty? Uh, what it comes is a walkout. Frustration. That's that's kind of what not, mm, my head's all messed up right now. <clears throat> um, the whole thing about Nia, they said we say that's up in the air. Nobody really knows what's going on there. Neville, I agree with Joe. Like the, the fact that you, they have nothing else to do, they don't have anything else for them right now, and it's just WWE being insulting. It seems like they're not insulting fans. They're insulting their own employees. What do you mean? Okay, it's like we said, we see the, the worth of Neville. Mm-hmm. I don't think that you can say WWE. He said WWE probably does not see. He was the guy that kept the cruiserweights relevant until Enzo came around. I okay. So why not have something? You got to keep this guy doing something to keep your two hundred five division. Oh, I agree. Um. Yeah. If if the whole rumors are coming out that they had nothing planned for him afterwards, I get it. I I get being frustrated with your character. My thought process is why after Kalisto then drops the title again at TLC, isn't there something like? Because especially after la- after this week's Raw, it seems like it's setting up a cruiserweight Survivor Series match. You know, uh, traditional rules. Enzo's got his squad, and then you'd have the Kalisto other cruiserweights on the other Ali. side. Neville could lead it, you know, but I mean, granted, it's difficult going from heel to face, but I, you know, at the same time, he could just align himself or even move to the main roster. But again, that's, that was part of the problem is he said he may have wanted a main roster and just wasn't getting it. You know, it's, it's difficult, man. It really is, especially because we don't really know what's going on backstage, you know, it's just more of a, he said, she said thing coming from you know, dirt sheets and Twitter and uh, Twitter accounts, but it sucks because Neville, regardless of how little it hit main event before Enzo, Neville was still good. Yep. We all appreciated his mic work against Enzo. We even said he stepped it up against Enzo. You know, he was never bad, but he was never but he had, there was always room for improvement and he kept improving. You know, I don't want to say he wasn't a draw because he was to an extent. Him and, until Enzo, he was the only real draw we cared anybody cared about in the cruiserweights. And I mean, we've we've consistently said that uh if you're including non-main card matches, they had the best match on the WrestleMania card, him and Aries. Yeah. You know, uh it, it's I would I I understand his frustration. I'm you know none of us are trying to say that he's not. Uh, Callie, do you have any input or thoughts on this? I like I'm really <laughs> stalking the hell out of Nia Jax right now oh. uh, to just try to get a feel. Creepy. <laughs> well, no, because hey girl, <laughs> you smell hey. better when you're awake. Whoa, that's funny. <laughs> <laughs> I knew where that one was going. That's an inside joke. 
like a meme on the internet for the record so um i don't think continue you don't think does she <laughs> she stopped at that <laughs> right. i wasn't even trying to make a joke it wasn't until her eyes gave me that look i was like no i'm not being funny right now you said i don't think that nia Jax. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Dick. I, no i was thinking dot 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 when i said it he made the joke i know still directed both of you uh sorry Just deal kidding, with it motherfucker uh i don't Ow. think that she's I think there's some personal issues. I don't necessarily think there's something going on with the company. Um, just because based off her social media, it doesn't appear that way. Mm-hmm. Whereas like Neville, I mean, well, he hasn't really even used Twitter in like a year. So it's hard to really say right. where he's at. But with Naya, I don't. She was always on Twitter and now she's. She's still tweeting. She's still, I mean. What's her most recent tweet? Because I remember she had, as She's of been, Tuesday, she hadn't done anything since the early morning for Raw. Let's see. So, let's see. A day ago, she retweeted. Did you say day ago? A day ago? Day ago. Oh, <laughs> like, whoa! Day ago. Like, holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> she was tweeting about Nikki Bella. In the, the Dagaba system? <laughs> no. Run the Dagaba. Run the Dagaba. So she's been doing a lot of support towards like Nikki mm-hmm. and oh, the then dance with the stars. like, yeah, which she's totally rocking that out. Um, she retweeted about, there was like an interview done between Naya, uh, talking about her friendship with bliss and advice the rock gave her, um, with the hype. And then, I mean, she's liked some other stuff. So yeah, just, I mean, so the other, yeah, so outside the, of retweets, the last time she tweeted was Monday morning. Uh, yeah, when, when she tweeted Monday, bring it on. Not like most, love my body, and right. that was at ten thirty in the morning. But she's also liked stuff that are from people from WWE and just stuff about her and. Well, yeah, but she. But I'm, what I'm saying is, she hasn't really spoken. Right, but at least she hasn't removed anything from her bio saying, you know, she's not part of WWE. WWE. Yeah, anymore, but look, but man, Simon mm-hmm. Gotch still has his hit uh, Twitter. Simon Grimm, his Twitter handle is still. Gotch style WWE. Well, but is that the at? Yeah. Yes. But okay, but in, in his bio, does he say that he's a current WWE star? Uh, he was released way, uh, <laughs> way back earlier in the year. Well, yeah, like his main name because is Simon Grimm on it, and he just says the da- the damage ramblings of a uh, gangrenous mind. So, but in his bio, it's not like he's saying right. Huh? Well, like I said, man, uh, it's difficult i don't think she's pregnant yeah we i made a mention of I that know who Z started, no i know not pregnant. that but like i don't know why that rumor started it's not i oh, we know pregnancy kills girls push look at uh uh karma when she got knocked up <laughs> or enhances it <laughs> i was like the Get jokes it? push mm-hmm. pregnancy <laughs> Silly, a little bit, bitch for sure. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah, one hundred percent. Um, all right. So next thing, uh, talking about some feuding stuff, and this one's just real quick in passing. Rebby Hardy feuding with Julie, the uh, seamstress for WWE, and so the seems during Raw, WWE seamstress Julie Youngberg tweeted out I would love if the fifth man was dead Matt did I say that because somebody tweeted and she quoted it and hers uh, the tweet was uh, I think no match for me at no match for me our internet sucks so everything I don't have pulled up is not pulling up fast enough but she the person said that they would wonder like if broken Matt was the next one and she goes I would love if dead Matt was the next one was the fifth man and so Rebby Hardy quoted it and she was like, this crack had been running her mouth for years. We forget she exists until she comes out of her mouth every few months. Right. So damn, yeah, they, she, so this Julie started going on and talk about people from North Carolina, people, Cameron, North Carolina, uh, how she goes, did I mention the actual police report I have of the would be hackers from Cameron, North Carolina? Cause what she someone shit 
she apparently has had this feud long time with the Hardys, and she had wasn't said, she with, like going out with or married to uh, Shannon Moore? Yeah, she was. Uh, she's Shannon Moore's ex wife, and she said something on Twitter, and then she said that her Twitter was hacked. And she said Matt did it. So she goes talking about the police reports. Uh, did I mention I have the actual police report I have of the would-be hackers from Cameron, North Carolina? Hmm. Don't know many people there. How people read stuff into things is beyond me. Read into this. Detective investigates six years plus of harassment that originated in Cameron, North Carolina. Rebby Hardy quotes these tweets going, Actually, I have screenshots of you randomly trying to start with us for no reason every time. Get help, Julie. We were actually contacted by an officer a few years ago about a crazy fan making outrageous claims and wasting their time. It was Julie. No one is stalking you, hacking you, spying on you. No one even remembers you exist until you start revealing death wishes on Twitter. I mean, like, I don't... (laughs) I didn't take her original tweet to be anything... Super offensive, but I guess when you got a like a a long feud going um between the two of them that I guess that tweet can come across a little rude. dead man I don't know like i I'm, I could see how it could be a different kind of joke I don't know i Matt's so different in a cool way, so i don't I don't know I don't know what do you think Smitty? I don't care. <laughs> no fucks given. Oh. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Such enlightening revelations on everything going on. Well, it just seems to me that the more stuff that goes on with things, Rebby Hardy loves to get into personal drama. Oh, yeah, she does. She's she, she's kind of a train wreck, huh? Yeah. Wasn't Didn't she used to be a porn star? Yep. <laughs> yep. Goes she with got, the territory. She got the boobies. <laughs> Uh, And then continuing from that little alleged feud on Twitter to this little alleged feud on Twitter, uh, Cody Rhodes had a post-match comment after a successful ROH title defense at Global Wars. I believe this is Friday night. And this is what, hopefully, this is what Cody said um, that was... Spoken, uh, it was a backstage promo after the match of him and uh, after ROH. And again, our internet is incredibly stupid today, so I apologize because I can't hit play in a video to get the audio for it. Uh oh, Uh, here we go. (laughs) There is something about a man who does what he says he's going to do. When I came back over a year ago in August, there was this, this just like gaggle, this plethora of fans, of supporters for mine. And that night I ended up, I ended up garnering more critics than I had fans. I was polarizing. But as Ian Riccoboni pointed out, as you should know, everything that I said would happen at Ring of Honor has happened. I came into final battle and I said I would give them their biggest houses in history. I would give Ring of Honor that. And I cheated. I had the Young Bucks with me, Matt and Nick Jackson, and we gave them the biggest houses. And then I said I'm going to give you the biggest pay-per-view buy rate that you've ever had. And I set that record at best in the world when I won my very first world heavyweight championship. And then a death before dishonor. With that shooter, Minoru Suzuki, I broke my own record, and I set a new record. It's no longer the company that defines the man, it's the man that defines the company. And that company is Ring of Honor, and the company that I keep is the Bullet Club. So come at me, and I will be smiling. (laughs) Because I am the biggest damn draw. In this entire industry. And if you're someone who's competing with me for that title, you know exactly who you are. And I know exactly what you should do. Kiss the ring. (laughs) So that was Friday. Last week... Roman made the comments that those guys were the three workhorses and the biggest draw in wrestling. Cody then said he's the biggest draw on uh, that 
post match promo. Well, a fan of Roman tweeted, said, Roman Reigns, what's your thoughts on this? And Roman goes, I don't even need to click the link and watch it. If that house didn't draw over 100,000, he's just talking silly. Hashtag walk over talk. I don't agree with that. I don't agree with that he's talking silly. Uh, I think it's bullshit because I'm sorry. If you put – you can put Cody Cody Rhodes anywhere at any promotion and he's going to put a bunch of seats. Outside of WWE, do you think Roman will be as much of a draw as he is? Yeah. It's because why? Is it because he's a WWE built guy? It's because yeah. He, yeah it's because he's, he's a name. A name. Yeah, one hundred. It's the same. Re- Look, Neville was he putting butts in seats before WWE? He was wrestling as Pac, right? He was. He was oh, a mid Carter. Yeah, at best. Then he ran through NXT. Then he's the WWE Cruiserweight Champion. He's gonna put more butts in seats on the Indies now if he actually left. You know, that WWE machine gives you something. There's really only three fucking guys that can claim they can do anything in wrestling without the WWE machine, you know, and that's Omega and the Bucks. Colt's doing pretty good for himself. He kind of started the whole thing. But again, there's there's no comparison to the other the ones. Colt's okay. But he's not. I think Cody would have did it off his family name anyway. What? He could, even if he didn't have to start off in WWE, I think he still could have made a name for himself just off of his name. He is a son of the late great. Okay. Dustin. Him he's, leaving. Go ahead. Also, no. right. I, but he's made it this far without necessarily using his name to an extent. But he's. It's still. It, it, it's still who he is. Like it's known. Right. You know, uh, no, I'm going to tell you this right now. Had he not hit the WWE machine, I'm assuming, and this is just what I believe because he got a lot of push after the WWE because of how he left and why he left and all the drama that was involving him in WWE. So obviously it made him a name. He took it and ran with it for sure. But... It doesn't mean that he's still not using the WWE machine. Because, look, Roman's commenting on it on Twitter. He's making subtle mentions. Buck's still making subtle mentions. You know, you know, we, we, we said that they're still using WWE old school stuff. WCW old school stuff. Because the two suite originated with NWO. The click. Yeah, but not that was... Okay, but it originated the nw is still the click dude it, but they put it on tv you know what i'm saying you didn't see that on wwe so it originated with nwo as far as the main fans outside of that one fucking video at madison square garden with a curtain call you didn't see the the too sweet the you know or as they call it, the wolf thing um so then after that cody said something else following or no to start Sunday's ROH uh, Global Wars? Global Wars tour. Yeah. Uh, It was the Chicago one. So Cody came out and we're going to see if it plays. Nope. It's not playing the audio. It's just conversation. And this is also led up to Cody Rhodes signing his uh, official Ring of Honor contract. Yeah. So he started making a whole bunch, uh, having a whole bunch of conversation uh, regarding, I, I really want to get the audio to this and I can't find it. I thought I had it, but that was just, it was a GIF thing. Um, basically, he had made mention of Roman. He goes, is that a tactical vest or is it something covering up your belly because of the the testing, you know, getting busted with your, the drugs and everything like that? Um, he He's still going you know, on and ripping into Roman further, you know, um, it's, I don't know, man, I'm more of the, I get it. This reminds me of WCW versus WWE, WWF. This has the beginning stages of it. 
you know. Do you pair Cody Rhodes with Lex Luger? No. Why would I? What? Oh, he said at the beginning of like WWF versus WCW. They said want to open shots alone after. No, uh, <clears throat> the opening shots and stuff were from the Bucks and everything like that. The, all that stuff was, uh, I would say, the opening shots. This to me, right now, is more like Hall and Nash showing up. Mm. Maybe not as big, not as big as the leg drop moment at Bash at the Beach. Double just. Hall coming in, you know, who right? I am. Like starting the whole real startings of it because that raw invasion angle caused a real cease and desist. The joking of cease and desist were all all jokes until that. Then WWE dropped a real cease and desist on the Bucks, and they posted it online. Yeah, and then Cody saying that they draw. Roman on Monday Night Raw saying, we're the biggest draws in wrestling today. Cody then firing back on Friday. Roman firing back on Twitter Saturday. Co- Cody making the comments on Sunday. Uh, you know, I'm... Do you guys have anything to say? About this something? I, all of this. I, I just... I, I don't... I disagree. I don't think it's comparable to the outsiders. Okay, why not? Because the outsiders that was like a surprise. Nobody saw it coming. Everyone knew Cody was leaving, everyone knew what he was doing. They've been watching him on the Indies for a while. He didn't just pop up in a new company unexpected. He popped up in a bunch of little companies before. But you know, it wasn't unexpected or you know Yeah. It's not like he Oh my God, last time we saw him was on Monday Night Raw, and now he's on Ring of Honor cutting the scathing promo. You know, it's not like that. He's already been on the Indies for quite a while. Everybody's been having their eye on him, you know. <coughs> and everybody was throwing contracts at him, too. But what I'm saying is the surprise factor I get, you can't have that anymore. It's gone. Yeah, thanks With the, the All the internet. But as far as a true feud between companies, I don't even think this is a company feud. No. I don't think there's beef between Ring of Honor and WWE. There's beef between Cody and Roman Reigns. Or maybe there's not. Maybe they're trying to book each other into a program. Or Cody's trying to book himself into a program because Roman Reigns is a bigger star. Next, he got the WWE machine behind him. Yeah, I don't necessarily think that ROA uh, and, or, yeah, um, and WWE have issues i think it's more of on an individual level and i don't think that cody has an issue with roman i i think it's just like what wrestling is kind of turning into right that the, this is how the um especially guys like cody who are on the indies this is how they make money like last year Big Van Vader did it with Will Ospreay. You know, he created this little Twitter war of words. Uh, it was not Osprey; it was Osprey and Ricochet. Right, but you know, Vader, the, you know, ba- booked himself into a, a match, a program with Will Ospreay, and got himself a nice payday out of the deal. Um, social media can be used as a tool to do that now in professional wrestling, and I think Cody may be doing that. Yeah, I think that causing like these little feuds, like it gets you attention. Like that's. How you're gonna have to pull your fans, I think, nowadays, is with social media. It's not just you know word of mouth. It's, Especially if you don't have the uh, WWE machine behind yeah, you. Yeah, I think like they have to do what you kind do. of play around with like the big dog or, with WWE. <laughs> no pun intended. No, right. <laughs> um, I I think you have to kind of poke the sleep, not the sleeping bear, but you kind of have to poke the giant and go, look at me, like. Here I am in the indies, and yeah, I'm important too. It's not just people in WWE, because I think people outside WWE want to prove that they're just as good or worthy of your attention as people in WWE, just because it's not maybe the necessarily something that's televised you know, on specific days on a certain network and have all that. I think 
when you don't have that sort of pushing you like what WWE has, I think you have to kind of poke at it to get the attention yourself. Especially if you're not going to join them. Well, lots of these guys on Andy's end all be all is they want that WWE payday. Yeah, but I don't. Well, yeah, they all, everyone wants the WWE payday, but not everyone wants to necessarily go, to the go there and work for that paycheck. They'd rather try to or deal with the politics. Right. That's what it is. It's the politics and it's the being creatively stifled. So just let's look, let's look at something. And, and put, you know, you, it's it's creatively stifled. It, you know, it can put limitations on your character, your mic work, and your in-ring work for certain guys. And I think a lot of people, especially like the Young Bucks, where you have like the two suit, you have the Bullet Club. I think people like that, they don't want to lose something that they've built up so much on their own because they're going to lose that when they come to WWE. And especially if you're ta- talking about the top three indie earners, Omega and the Bucks, I mean, for sure, WWE would limit what they do in the ring for sure. And what, and but for sure, creatively, they would lose, they would, they would lose the ability to say and do half the shit that they do right now. They would lose their empire based off of like the bullet club and right. Their fame. They'd probably like, lose their Cody hot topic deal little, on their pro wrestling tease yeah, deal. Like, and the you know, ring and like, they would, know, it might, it might honestly be dumb for them to go to WWE at this point. So it's easier to poke at that and create things off of the reaction of WWE. Plus they can play, they can play heels, character heels on TV and their wrestling roles and their companies that they work for. But when it comes to like being the elite and, and selling in pro wrestling tees and selling in hot talk, hot topic and being the presence in social media that they are, they're making themselves into the baby faces and the big WWE corporate machine is the big heel picking on the little baby face young bucks. And that's just going to give the young bucks more, more money, more money, and more exposure. But yeah. that's what happened with WWF and WCW too. WCW was the face company. Everyone loved the NWO. Granted, everyone loved DX, but more people until the whole hearing of Mick Foley. I don't think they loved WCW and NWO better because that was all WCW had outside the cruiserweight. It was no, no, no. It, it wasn't because like WWE was the heel. Big bully picking on the WCW face. It was just that I think w- WCW was putting out more progressive and dynamic and adult oriented programming, and WWE was still stuck in fucking cartoon tickle butt land. You know, so I don't think it was like a case of, oh, they're picking on us, you know. Like, no, I just they think were. they were putting out a better. What are you talking pro- about? Bischoff okay. used to give the fucking results for the entire Monday night. I'm talking yeah, about WWE you, picking on WCW like they're bullying WCW. But what, okay, WCW but hold on. WWE's on not WWF. really picking WWE's not really picking on anyone either. No, yeah, they're picking at the Young Bucks a little bit. Why? Because of the season assist after they invaded Monday Night Raw? Yeah, but it really worked out in the, the Young Bucks' favor. Jagger. Anyway, yeah. That, that, so did all of that stuff work out in the favor of WCW for a while until it fucking bit WCW in the ass. But the real, the real problem with the whole WCW thing was that WCW – uh, I, I'm pretty sure that a lot of people would agree with, with the reason WC, one of the biggest things WCW did, the, they never really built other new stars. They just pretty much took established guys from WWF and kept them over by any means necessary. Yeah. And one of the biggest problems with that is what some of the biggest guys that they had from WWF, they gave them full creative control. Okay. And that became an issue. I'm, no, I'm really failing wrong. to see what that point had to do with any, what I was just saying, though. I was, I was talking about the Monday Night Wars. Right? But the, no, we're not talking about the Monday Night we're, we're talk, I mentioned that this is similar to that as for the, the Bucks and everyone being the WCW side. And, of course, you have WWE. I'll put, actually, I'll put Bucks on the, on the WWE side at that point because WCW picked on WWF. There's... So is W. So are the Bucks, kind of. Uh, I don't really see the Bucks. I think the Bucks just parodied some of the stuff WWE did, and that's a lot of cease and desist. Yeah, but that's like poking it. 
I think they're just exploiting what was thrown in their laps by the WWE. What do you mean thrown in their laps? The whole season just sits like they're they're making, you know, they're making the biggest deal out of it that they possibly can. Look, I'm not arguing that they took that and ran with it, creative wise. It was that was money making, obviously. To have a shirt out for three days in a month and it still be the highest selling shirt in all of the on on all of pro wrestling teams, that's nuts. You took you made money. I'm not arguing that. That cease and desist came after the whole Raw invasion angle. They had been poking at WWE with a WWE stooge on the being the elite YouTube series for months up until that. Yeah, and it all saying that they couldn't say fuck the revival anymore, saying they couldn't say suck it, even though they could. Saying they took away the hand gestures, you know, like they they had been poking for a very long time, having having Sammy. Having Kevin, having AJ show up and being the elite videos, even if, it, albeit Sammy going, do you know which way to this? Or AJ just standing in the background when they're in front of a club. You know, they're not, obviously, that didn't get anyone fired then. The raw invasion angle got Jimmy Jacobs fired to where he turned it and made it a shirt as well. Yeah. You know, that raw thing. invasion is what, really pissed WWE off because in that on that video especially because it came out that night they put it out right after Raw on that video they were telling that they had people from the crowd saying they only went to it because they won free tickets they'd rather be at an ROH Bullet Club event they had WWE fans shitting on the WWE product the same thing that WWE they did the same WCW. exact thing with the WCW when fans. They, when they went in with the... Yeah. Uh, when they actually a lot of the WCW agreed. fans said the same. We're just here because we got free tickets. Agreed. And what I'm saying is, because of that... So that would put... Like I said, that would go back to prove my point. Like WWE is more the WCW at this point. They're a bigger dog. But WWE responded with their run when wcw was already when wwe did the invasion wcw was already ripping into them over and over and over again so now when wwe throws the cease and desist out it's because the they're getting too much trucks have been going at them over and over and over again and they finally respond and they're still not really saying anything they're taking it and they're taking it and they just run away Still, that's what they do. WWE wise, I'm talking about WWE. I'm not talking about the, the Bucks, dude. Make your money. I'm not even saying you're wrong for what you're doing because they're not. It, you kidding me? If I found a way to make us thousands of dollars randomly in three <laughs> fucking days for this show, I I would suck the fuck out of that dick. I would straight up on it. If you told me that this dick had thousands of dollars that come out of it right off the bat and for our show one time, I had to suck it. And I'm talking about out of the dick, not some dude going, hey, here's a thousand dollars, suck my dick. No. I'm <laughs> talking about hey, money. Yeah, I'm talking if I, someone handed me a dildo in reins and said, you suck this till it comes and you're going to have thousands of dollars for your show. I'd be like, well, <laughs> <laughs> money. <laughs> but that's what they're doing. Basically, it was a money it was a money teat that was put out in front of the fucking bucks and they milked the shit out of it. And the reason that WWE doesn't want to say more on it is because they don't want to feel the fire more. They don't... Because it's kind of like... Yes. A catch... Is it catch, catch 22 or catch 23? Uh, where, where it's... If they keep put they their do, foot damn down, damn they they're giving them more money, but they're still, <laughs> the young bucks are still going to go at them no matter what. They'll still find another way. So it's like, at what point do you, you have to, along the way, like, put your foot down with certain aspects, but at the same time, you can't do it in a way that's, I mean, it's not going to be hard to capitalize on WWE when they're doing something against you, just because of how big of a platform, especially if you are a smaller platform. Mm -hmm. So it's... It is a catch twenty two for WWE in regards to when handling these situations. I because agree. Because of how much of a follow the Young Bucks have. Well, Huge. just how, and I mean, the Young Bucks and everyone else, but 
the entire Bullet Club. So I think that's still one hundred percent set. The WWE put them over accidentally. Um, <laughs> let's move on to the week in wrestling. Then we're going to get into our pro wrestling scorecard picks. Uh, Raw kicked off with Kurt Angle coming to the ring, Shield coming down, cutting a promo. All of their uh, the, the TLC opponents coming out. Kurt Angle saying, "Stop! If you go and attack them now, we're not going to have this main event. You won't have your cage match. You won't have." Um, your tag team title matches bar and Miz won't have his Miz TV. Uh, next, uh, Jason Jordan, Titus O'Neil, and Apollo Crews uh, defeated Elias, Luke Gallows, and Carl Anderson in Battle of the Jobbers match. Who is the bigger jobber? Turns out Carl Anderson is a bigger jobber than Apollo Crews. Cedric Alexander then defeated Gentleman Jack Gallagher with uh, Rich Swan by his side and Brian Kendrick, the Brian Kendrick by Gentleman Jack Gallagher side. Uh, Ms. TV was a segment. S- Sasha Banks uh, then defeated Alicia Fox to where right afterwards, Alicia Fox went nuts in the backstage area. This is Alicia Fox we all love. Even pushing a ref to where she was allegedly fined an undisclosed sum, but given a match on the pre-show of TLC because of that. Uh, Kalisto then confronted Enzo and got his ass kicked because Enzo went from being the most hated guy on 205 Live to the most paid guy on 205 Live to where he bought himself an entourage. Uh, Ambrose and Rollins defended their Raw Tag Team Championships uh, against Cesaro and Sheamus. Finn Balor then... Oh, my God. Dressed up like a great pumpkin. Came out, and he said he has his own thing and his own demon, and yeah... Uh, more Halloween. Snapchat filters, more fades, watery fades, all that stuff. Mickey James and Bailey then came out and defeated uh, Alexa Bliss and Emma by uh, Emma taking the fall. F- no, I'm sorry. Alexa Bliss took the pin from Mickey James specifically. Mickey then cut a nice little backstage promo saying she can't wait to be the seven time women's champion. And then Braun Strowman defeated Roman Reigns in a steel cage match, which because of that victory, turned the TLC match into a five-on-three handicap instead of a four-on-three handicap with Kane being the number five guy on Miz's team. As for SmackDown, kicked off with Daniel Bryan coming out into his home state, hometown. Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn then came out, followed, uh, cut a nice little promo. Daniel Bryan said he's going to go find a couple guys that will punch them in the face. Charlotte Flair, Naomi, and Becky Lynch defeated Natalia, Lana, and Tamina, with Lana taking the tapping out to the figure eight, eight leg lock. After that was a promo, again backstage of Sammy and uh, KO with Daniel Bryan, where Daniel Bryan said he found two guys to punch them in the face, one being the 13-time world champion Randy Orton, the other being Shinsuke Nakamura. Sin Cara then defeated Baron Corbin by countout. Jinder came out and cut a promo where he challenged Universal Champion Brock Lesnar to a match at Survivor Series. Ziggler defeated Bobby Roode by rolling up the tights. And then Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn defeated Shinsuke and Randy Orton by, after a low blow, Sami hitting the haluva kick on Orton and pinning him in the middle of the ring. Post-match promo, Sami and KO start shit-talking Brian in the uh, backstage area. They said, what do you got for us next week? And he goes, I ain't got nothing. That'll be decided by Shane McMahon, who's returning next week to SmackDown Live. And then they went back outside, Randy and Shinsuke at the base of the ramp, and Kevin Owens saying that Chris Jericho is his best friend. Sami Zayn is his best friend. Uh, Okay. Let's get into it. We'll start off with the biggest thing. Fucking Kane coming out the ring inside the steel cage. He's live. That was a nostalgia pop. Like, Man. Really. But what do you think about it? I don't give a fuck, but I just like the uh, whole. Why not? I ain't mad. Let me say, I'm, <clears throat> it's really, um, was it necessary? No. we. Had, it was a surprise. It was a legit yes. surprise. And that's the biggest thing. And that, that nostalgia of Kane coming from under the ring. I enjoyed that, but it does, not, it does nothing for me. and it, it does not interest me anymore in this match, and I'm. Gonna be Joe. I've never been excited by Kane ever. Callie. Okay. Uh I'm excited. I know give a shit. It's Kane. 
You Fuck. don't give a shit? I do. Oh, I thought you said you don't. I now Sorry. give a shit. Now give a shit. You didn't give a shit about this match before? Nope. Damn. Not a flying fuck. Well, she wasn't around during the shield, the dominance that was known as the shield. I'm mad her. I wasn't excited about it. I, I didn't give a fuck that the shield was back. I never said, you know. It's like the build to I'm it. just is over what, the Miss Taraj and the Miss. I have been. Kane's a good to great big man. I'm sure he's a Hall of Famer. He's a great company guy, but honestly, when is he? When have you? When do you ever remember like one of those moments with Kane? His his debut. What are you talking about see. him fucking setting Jr. on fire, him ripping a cell door off in his debut in WWF. It's, and all, just, having a cell. it's all just tickle butt stuff. Tickle butt. So then, the Undertaker was tickle butt stuff to you. A lot of it, yes. But the Undertaker could back it up with incredible matches. Kane, did you not care when Shane the first time went off the top of a damn cage against Taker? You know he jumped the tight trying to get. Uh, Are you talking about against Taker? No, against Kane. He jumped the trying no, to get Kane. against Taker, Taker at WrestleMania. That's one you're referring to. No, that's that the first one you showed me? That's that's not the f- no the f- he, he went off stuff Way years and years that. ago. Okay, but the first time he went off one, what was against? You weren't. What does Shane have to do with Kane? No, I'm just saying. And like, what surprises you? Like, what? It doesn't tickle your butt. <laughs> and tickle actually, butt. like, <laughs> <laughs> no, I was I was more impressed with uh, Shane going off the cell against Kevin than I was against Taker. Mainly because of what was under the table, <laughs> <laughs> right? You know, or what wasn't under the table you know <laughs> there was like a giant launch pad under the table when he jumped off for taker but that anyway I, I still don't see what that has to do with kane kane has had good matches but like dude no one's ever claiming like some people say that undertaker versus Shawn michaels is the greatest match of all times Meh. What, when has anyone ever said kane <laughs> was even like a four-star match or he said you know what i mean name one really Awesome Kane Kane match you can remember. Ambulance match Kane versus Shane McMahon. I don't re- Undertaker it's versus not, it doesn't even stick okay, out my mind. Undertaker versus Kane WrestleMania twenty. Uh, dude, the first blood match with him first and Austin. Blood match with Austin. Didn't that follow the Foley uh, Taker Hell in the Cell? No, I think it. Did. No, if it, it, that it no, wasn't. Pretty it sure wasn't it the full, no, it wasn't the was it? Yeah, maybe it was. It yeah, be, yeah right. because like their little. Tickle butt blood and that match couldn't touch anything from Foley and Taker, you know. Yeah. And then the, the cell came back down, and then so no matter how good that match may or may not have been, it's it, buried, under, is but buried under that. Yeah, but you're but you're still saying that he's never had a thing. Well, I'm okay. So the reason Look, this I don't even dislike. Him. I'm just saying RBD. he's he's not like one of my top ten guys. He's never had one of my top ten, fifteen, twenty, even twenty five most memorable awesome matches. You know, mm-hmm. he's just. A solid big man. All right. Okay. That's it. I'm, I'm not talking shit more about so, him. More solid than show? Um, no. Kane's one of his tag champions. Was show because show is good. a different kind of big than mm. Kane. I mean, show has the same disease that Andre and Kali. Ha- I mean, that's a disease. Kane's just big. I mean, he's tall, but he doesn't. he doesn't have that gigantism. So I think it's... Whatever show can do, I think is a, a bit more impressive just because I think it's harder for him to get his body to do that type of stuff. E- even as big as Kane is, and I know it's hard for him being a big man to do more athletic things too, but that being said, it's even harder for Big Show to do. Kane is the reason that the Shield is going to win this match. Yeah. Yeah, he's there to take the fall. So no. No. One- no. I don't even think that. I think Miz takes the fall for this one. I could see Miz taking the fall. I could even see Cesaro or Samus taking the fall. Um, I I could see Miz taking the fall. Why not have Kane take the fall? He can take the fall for the team, and it hurts no one because on the team. Because Kane's going to be the problem with the team. There's going to be something going on, and it's, I think yeah, it's going to The problem no, could be that he gets pinned. No. I, I, I can tell you right now. The, the one story I think will make Oh, you think he's going to turn on the team? No. No, Kane's no, going off the reins after this. No, he's not. Yeah. Drink revenge for Taker. No. What? I'll call bullshit. I think Reigns is going after the IC title after this. And then I think Kane is going after Strowman after this. Because something's going to happen between them. Go and after Kane, who? Strowman. 
and I think the two monsters are going to fight, and it's going to be putting Strowman over even more. Yeah. <clears throat> I think he goes at the reins. Okay, that's why you're losing your belt this year, this month. <laughs> it, it, it it doesn't make any sense to have Roman Reigns versus Kane at all. Doesn't he, even with the, the th- you're trying to get Roman over. How are you going to put Roman over as a face, as someone to cheer, if Kane's avenging Taker and everyone's already mad that Reigns <laughs> retired Taker? How are you going to get Roman cheered anymore? This the that's what the shield is for to get Roman cheered. Uh uh-uh. uh reunion. But you put him in you're putting him in a singles match against Kane. Nobody's gonna cheer for him. Nobody. Nobody cheer for him when he when he fought. But know, that's what they're trying it. to do. They're trying to get people to cheer for him. You put him up against Kane, you're cutting all of the work you're putting 100%. in with the shield. Hundred percent. He's uh, when you're trying to build him up to be a better Oh my god, I just wish they would bury him. Um I don't. I do. That's fine. I'm just not impressed by him at all. But anyway. Uh, <laughs> yeah, they do want to build him up, so you can't put him against Kane because that would 100% ruin him even further. No, it would ruin him because I yeah, believe that guy's not ruinable. There's a reason the shield is back so fast. It's to get Roman over. Right. Oh, yeah. And to put him against Kane undoes everything you just did with the shield. The shield read was rushed anyway. I agree, but it had to be rushed because they weren't getting him over. I, I'm willing to bet more money on Strowman versus Kane somewhere else down the line than... Strowman definitely needs the win. Yeah. And Strowman needs another formidable for- force to put him back into a huge monster guy. Yeah, it's and it's like... I think Orlando has said on shows in the past, you can take a guy like Kane, a guy like Show, who's been off TV for a while, has a bunch of losses, flip flop between heel and face a million times, but when you need to fucking heat him up for someone like a Braun Strowman, mm-hmm. you can bring him in and do that relatively easily. Yeah, the, the five on three yeah. is going to be amazing. Be and. The shield are going to go over, and they're, it's going to be some sort of Dissension. problem going on on the outside with Kane and Strowman, which is why the shield will go over. And then the shield are once again a dominant force. They are not losing. They are just went over three on five on a team. That's what's going to happen. Or the situation could That's be. why Kane's back. But or it or also just, makes it, sense to bring Kane back because right now, just like you're saying, everyone's like, Kane's pissed that he retired Taker. That's why he came back and fought. Yeah, great. Cool. Awesome. Wonderful. That's a good reason to get him in there. Not going to continue because of that. Because then you're going to start making people boo him again. People are already booing him. <laughs> and they're trying to stop that. Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn on SmackDown. Joe. Loved it. (laughs) It was the only one. (laughs) Hug me. Hold me tighter. That was so (laughs) fucking funny, dude. I don't know. Why don't you go walk out? Oh, when Owens said that, I was like, oh. (laughs) Well, when Sami Sami said. Yeah, they just roasted Daniel Bryan, who I'm, I'm representing today, you know, some. Some love for Daniel. He got he got he got tore up from the floor up on Tuesday. So Hell I got to yeah, show my man some love here. You know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Sammy said we're both great and we're better. I mean, I still am. Uh, I was like, I was, I was like, like, damn. He felt like like Kelso from that '70s show. You're like, ooh, burn. You know, <laughs> <laughs> you know like <laughs> it was pretty good though. You know, I, I'm loving Hill Zane already. Oh, for sure. I was excited to see this heel music. turn, and it's it's already delivering. Oh, the, yeah, he said, get rid of I Scott love music. dude. I love the way like. <laughs> now he dances down to the ring like all conceited like 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 almost sarcastic like <laughs> where yeah. he's like dancing is just mocking the fans Man, like look how happy I am <laughs> I, I don't give a fuck anymore <laughs> yeah I like it it's it's good if we just flip the bird to this, this I hope this finally uh 
helps move Sammy up the card. I don't know, man. A haluva kick and getting a pin on Orton, regardless of after, yeah. if, regardless oh. of after a nut shot, you pin or Randy gonna Orton. Orton's going to kick you back in the dick. <laughs> you know that, right? You kick. You got a pin in the middle of the ring. Yeah, no, that's on a, a that's 13 a thirteen time world champion. It's a good rub for Sammy. That's uh, obviously Orton showing him some respect. Which is great. And, you know, Sammy made a point. You know, he was like, I've been in this business for 15 years and I've always been the good guy the whole time, which he has. And he goes, and now it's. This is his first heel turn of his. No, it wasn't. It, it was generically, he and uh, Owens were heel at first. Yeah. And then he was the face when Owens, Owens turned. when Steen turned on him. Yes, agreed. Uh, all the backstage segments, everything that these two guys are doing right now. Uh, it's natural. It's organic. It's entertaining. <laughs> I'm worried, though. Why? I'm worried because literally like I mocked it uh, when giving the rundown for SmackDown, it was the exact same fucking thing that was being said with Jericho. And I'm worried that while is and look, I'm worried it'll go stale too quick, too quick. Unless Sammy turns on Kevin. I'm going to tell you this right now. Sammy's not going to turn on Kevin. I know. Because I'm going to bet any amount of money. What this is doing right now is setting up for Owens and Zayn at Mania. Oh, could you imagine? What the fuck is that look from Callie? Do you really want to lose more money? Why would you? What? She goes Can you bet. not make bets anymore? Because no, you I'm, don't I win didn't em. say I was betting. I, I that was just figure. I'd, I'd figure it's being. Yeah. I was just saying. Because you and making bets with WWE things have not been going in your favor. Oh, I got some money for y'all, by the way. <laughs> I know. Um, but yeah, no, think about that. That seems like a great way for this to go. Obviously, Sammy's oh, is Kevin's number two. Yeah. <clears throat> I could totally see Sammy versus KO at Mania because of this. And I wouldn't be angry about it. Like, ah, oh, you, man, could you, that you. build, you give so, you're caring so much right now. My thing is, do they hold on to this story and keep it interesting enough for that to happen? That's the big question. Yeah. Yeah, 100%. Can WWE do it? Yeah. I, I mean, look. Right now you have the nostalgia factor. The people that are indie guys are looking at Generico and Steam again. Yeah. Exactly what they wanted. You know, it hasn't been that way. It was that way for an hour and a half on <laughs> <NXT>. NXT TakeOver. <laughs> that was it. The other time that you saw anything positive of them two was the Kevin Owens show DVD. Yeah. That's it. You didn't see anything else positive from these guys on TV. Now they're finally together again and you have that nostalgia feel. Also, that then because now you're getting the excitement that people who haven't seen it yet and for and it's for the people cuz Again, we've talked about it. Oh, there's, oh, I've seen the worst of him. I've never seen him like this, blah, blah, blah. And he used to be my best friend, and we stood up at each other's weddings, and blah, blah, blah. And people have been built, built up to hear about their past and how great of friends they were, and now they're finally getting it. So you're going to have a good run with this for a good couple months. But you know, we got the manias in March or April this year. It's April? Yeah, whatever. Sure. It's literally either the last week of March or the first week of April, so it really doesn't matter. Soon, ish. That's in New Orleans. I want to go. I'm thinking about gotta buy some tickets to go. I hundred percent think that. <laughs> what? I hundred percent think that <laughs> your southern accent came out. <laughs> oh, no. Hey, you were in Atlanta for the last couple of days. Southern accents coming out. Nostrils are flaring. <laughs> Look out! <laughs> uh, your nostrils weren't flaring, but he totally <laughs> got you on it. <laughs> Actually, they were. They were? Oh, well. For sure. Continue with your comp- what you're saying. Your point. Uh, even if, like, <laughs> WWE... <laughs> <laughs> She snorted. Take she a drink. Snorted, snorted live on the air. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, good heavens. <laughs> I don't think WWE can screw it up because of the charisma that Sami Zayn and KO have. I think they have the ability of continuing this all the way to Mania and then not going state. Shut up. And I'm not saying anything. 
I just so I don't think that th- that will be an issue for them to continue it and it not become stale just because of who they are. I agree with you, but I think I think they give Kevin Owens a lot more leeway with his run, and his character. Well, yeah, that's and why. I, and, and I agree with that. I, I don't think it's WWE that could fuck this up. I think they give Kevin Owens enough of a leeway to where he can't fuck this up. And I think him and Sammy are definitely writing this whole thing for themselves. I was going to oh, – well. obviously, you, you got to believe that Kevin Owens is kind of pulling for this in the back. Oh, yeah. Right? You know, yeah. like trying to yeah, probably do his friend Sammy a solid. You know, like let's let's do something with Sammy here, you know? Yeah. I can say that. on him. No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're because they're kind of making Uso a face with the whole backstage segment. Yeah. Oh, god damn it. That but you know what? Okay. That that carries it that keeps the story interesting. Yeah. I don't why not? I don't want I, I like seeing KO and I like seeing Sammy together. I just don't like seeing them as like a tag team. I'm gonna tell you this right now, though. They were a tag team, so this isn't that's even like, that's like broken to the industry. But like, but this how so, I look okay, at KO have, is different than we have made comments about how we're so sick of these teams that aren't tag teams taking titles, and how it doesn't make any sense that this team would lose, this established team would lose to people that aren't really established. You know, I give I gave the leeway for Ambrose and Rollins because as the Shield, they were still a trio before and they were a team. You know. Uh, I like the way they built Shiz- uh, Shizaro, you know, uh, as angry, f- bitter rivals that came together to have similar everything. And then, so I'd be okay with watching Sammy and KO take it because in all honesty then, my friends, wait a minute. Would that give KO a Grand Slam? Yep. Tag, U.S., I see. I see. And Universal. he was universal. He doesn't have the WWE, the, the world but title. Don't forget that they are counting the Universal and the WWE yeah. title is the same. So that would give him the, the Grand, Grand Slam. Slam. I'm okay with that. I just, I know what belt I want to see on him, and I just, it's not going to happen. Especially not right now. Good segue. Jinder Mahal came out and had a conversation with oh himself. God. Good for him. No one else is really paying attention except one guy that he called out. Brock Lesnar, the beast, he said he wants to face him at Survivor Series champion versus champion match. Not for either belt, just he wants to beat the beast. We had somebody uh kill you. We had somebody ask us on our Twitter, uh at BDR Cast. Can I have your QR code? No, no, not that one. Not that question. We get that one all the fucking time. <laughs> um the gentleman is uh, Cody Linzer uh, at C underscore Linz8. He goes, there's no way they put gender over versus Brock, right? Please tell me there's no way. Uh, and I'm going to answer that live on the air. No. <laughs> <laughs> Hell no. Hell no. You Hell to did, the fuck no. This is a non-title match. How fucking fun would it be to watch Brock throw the Singh brothers around, dude? Oh, yeah. On the outside through some tables. Yes. Dude, he could launch them into like the 14th row. <laughs> it would be somebody get launched. It'd be Same. fucking amazing. <laughs> Tell, that's the first table. thing I thought of when I when I saw this. I was like, "Oh, <laughs> this could be so fun." <laughs> it's be like Randy beating on the yeah, Singh right. brothers. Just imagine Randy beating on the Singh brothers times a thousand. You're know, like, yeah. "Oh, that could be fun." <laughs> yeah, I agree with you wholeheartedly. Oh my god. Can we just hypothetically talk? Go for it. What if? I know you're not saying it's possible. What happens if Jinder wins that? I can't even talk about that hypothetically because there's no way that's going to happen. Here's why there's no way that's going to happen. You are building up Roman Reigns as the unbeatable man, uh, as the guy who can beat anyone. You are building up Brock Lesnar as the unbeatable man. Going into WrestleMania, it's going to be Roman Reigns versus Brock Lesnar, and the guy who can beat anyone is finally going to beat. The immovable force is finally going to hit. The uh. The, the unstoppable force is going to hit unstoppable force is finally going to come and run through the immovable object. That's what you're building the up for me. Unstoppable force meets the immovable object. As Gender Monsoon would say, "Yep, gender gender is totally jobbing to Brock as anybody else would." Gender's going back to what he was originally doing. He's done a job hardcore. 
to Brock Lesnar. And this is make yeah. anyone happy if he didn't job. What do you mean? If Brock lost? Does yeah. gender have any you title? Kill your WrestleMania does gender have any title I matches booked that between it, now and Survivor Series? No. Nope. Here's the thing. I understand that it kills that, but <laughs> that's why I'm talking hypothetical here. What is that what kind of reaction does that cause if you have gender win? Then you'd have to bring Taker back. Remember how I said Taker's not coming back because it would right. it, it would stifle you're missing my point. But okay. No, I'm, I'm, what I'm, you're saying what kind of reaction that caused. It officially takes away any of the unbeatableness I'm of Brock Lesnar. I'm talking Lesnar. from the people. I'm not talking what would happen instead. I'm saying. Oh, they how blew do you the think, fuck out of him. He get heat. Do you That's think that would draw thing. more attention to WWE or would it, it lose fans from. It, it would piss a lot of people off. Uh, because they're all about the reactions right now. And they're losing people. They're not filling stands. We've talked about this week after week after week. And this Although is the Smackdown only. Smackdown has been more full since. Right. Hell in a Cell. But that's. There was some empty seats at Hell in a Cell. Oh, yeah. Let me tell you. But it wasn't the whole half arena empty. It was like. No. A small portion, like yeah. a two third portion. Maybe. So your hypothetical just... situation. And, I, and okay, I'll play into your hypothetical situation. That's what I'm saying. I'm just. <laughs> Jinder Mahal goes over Brock Lesnar. Yeah. Okay. You're asking me what would happen. Yeah, like what kind of reaction would it get? It would get nothing positive. Tell me why you think it would be something positive. I don't know. I don't know if it would. Like, I guess. Maybe from people in India. Right. And that's one market that you already have over. It's a big market that's not being drawn in as much by Jinder Mahal that they expected. Well, that's why they just signed the girl who was in the May Young Classic. She just got signed. Davida? Yeah. She was originally now just signed. Another Middle Eastern lady was signed as well. Awesome. Uh, they just signed those two. I, I'm going to tell you this right now. Um, Jinder is going in to December, beginning of December, as the WWE champion. He's going to be the first ever, ever Indian uh, descent star. And we say descent because it's his bloodline, not where he's from. Fucker's from Canada. Um, to hold the WWE title and go in fighting as the WWE champion. Does he keep it in India? Dude, I don't know. I would love to see him drop in India and then maybe regain it the next night because it's like two nights or something like that. I could totally see that happening. I think that's oh, they also sweet. they also what they say when they planted seeds for AJ versus uh, yeah because then AJ comes out and then there's the drama between them. Uh, yeah, it's not. I don't know. Not gonna happen. Sorry, not gonna happen. Not gonna happen. I don't see a way that happens. The only thing that will come is that the heat that Mahal would get for beating Brock. Uh, my two hundred dollar mm. debt lost by count out to Sin Cara. <laughs> what? Don't ask me. I I, I, was, I, I gave it a what the fuck look. He lost two hundred dollars because Baron Corbin at LSL beats AJ clean in the ring one week. Loses, loses, to, Sin Cara. loses to Sin Cara. My count week. out the next week. <laughs> that's what, that's that's WWE booking for you. Insult my intelligence. <laughs> what? I can't even. Rem- <laughs> like, what? I can't even what? remember what Sin Cara did to put him in the outside. Suicide dive to the outside. That's just what it was. He jumped off the top. Oh, well, he jumped off the top turnbuckle and knocking Corbin into the announce uh, table and ran back into the ring. Corbin just didn't get back to the ring in time. <sighs> so stupid. And Sin Cara had a new mask. Yeah, bring back the old one. I don't like the new mask. I thought it was weird too because you could see his eyes. Yeah, and it took away the thing. It took away the wing tips. Yeah. yeah, whatever. Okay. Uh, I, I think that's about it to really. Oh, okay. Yeah, pumpkin face. I was gonna say, can we just talk about pumpkin, pumpkin oh, face shit, and uh, man. the shining pumpkin Finn Balor? <laughs> I was thinking this and the brain good thing. <laughs> So, they go. they got him done up like a pumpkin for Halloween season. <laughs> then you have the ring next to him, so it's fine. You got transgender Bray versus the great pumpkin. 
Ah, man. It's the great pumpkin, Bray Wyatt. <laughs> okay. The great pumpkin, Charlie Brown. I don't get it. I don't, I don't fucking get it. I have no interest whatsoever. Is because it it's around Tickle Halloween? Tickle butt. Tickle butt. Tickle butt. Joe really loves to have his butt tickled. Who doesn't? But what? Smitty. I don't. Nobody See? touched the butt. <laughs> Nobody? Nobody. Not even you. When I wash it, I wipe it, that's about it. I regret saying anything. I'm not going to go into <laughs> anything more of that. Nope. Moving on. We're going to go to TLC. <laughs> and we're going to make our pro wrestling scorecard picks. Uh, Be inappropriate. Here's the thing. <laughs> I want to mention before we go into this, uh, and I'm going to pull up the link for it because I could totally pull it up on my computer, but that'll never happen in time. But I will do it on my phone because my phone is ready, set, and go. WrestlingInc.com put up this today. It says, why bro, uh, headline, why Bray Wyatt and Bo Dallas have missed WWE events. And as you scroll down... Uh, said as noted, here's what they say. As noted, Bray Wyatt and his brother Bo Dallas have not been at WWE events since October 2nd Raw. Ring announcer Jojo Offerman has also been absent during that period. Watch proceedings. Justin the bar, nope, of the Pittsburgh Tribune noted on Twitter that they missed the events due to viral meningitis. Depending on the severity, symptoms can last from seven to ten days to several months. Who? Bray, Bo, and Jojo. The two brothers and the guy and the girl that Bray's dating. Big booty JoJo. Okay, never mind. Wait, what? What do you mean? Wasn't there a whole issue? That's why Bray's getting divorced. All right, continue. Yeah, because he's dating JoJo. Um. Why not? So Wrestle Votes, the place that's breaking all kinds of fucking news. Uh, put out the tweet, Braybo and JoJo have been off TV due to an illness. I will not report personal details. However, that is the reason. They then wrote, I am hearing other superstars may indeed be suffering from the same illness, and it may drastically impact Sunday's pay-per-view event. Oh, snap. So I don't know what we're going to be dealing with going into TLC, but some people, some people might be a little sick. little sick. So... We're going to go into our pro wrestling scorecards picks. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, this is the second time this month. There's usually two of them that we go. Sometimes it's just two on one weekend. Sometimes it's two on different weekends. This month happened to be uh, two on different weekends. Hell in a Cell and TLC are your October pay-per-views. Pro wrestling scorecards at PW Scorecards on Twitter and Instagram. You guys can tweet along with them live for the results. Just use the hashtag PWS results for the WWE TLC pay-per-view. If you guys... Enjoy them. You download your own scorecard. You hook it up. You wrestle. You have wrestling fantasy type matches with your friends for your own championship belts. The way the ring crew does here on Breaking Down the Ring. Our belts better. You go ahead and show Pro Wrestling Scorecard some fucking love on their Patreon website. Patreon.com slash PW Scorecards as well. Uh, they have three people who have submitted $5 or more a month. Uh, a Brett, a David, and an Erica. So we want to tell all of them thank you because, as we mentioned with our Patreon earlier, <clears throat> if you guys want to show love, uh, patreon.com slash bdrcast, our first person to subscribe and support us with a dollar donation is the none other than Daniel I'll send from... I'll you a thank you note, personal thank you note. None other than Daniel from Pro Wrestling Scorecard. What? So we want to say thank you. <laughs> we have one already? Yeah. Daniel is our first one. Oh, thanks, Daniel. So he's a beast. We freaking love him. Comes out with these. And look, this scorecard looks great, man. This is, It's a much more nice. Polished off. Polished. The, the tables looks good. Is a new look on the bottom. Instead of having tables, it just says English, Spanish, and other. It's a real good looking scorecard, man. Uh, so clean. I'm a huge fan of the look of this scorecard. So shout out to Pro Wrestling Scorecards. So we have seven matches. Kickoff match: Sasha Banks versus the crazy as fuck Alicia Fox. Uh, crazy as fox. Crazy? No, crazy as fuck. 
Alicia Fox. I'm not making saying Fox. That's stupid. 205 Live Tag Team Match. Cedric Alexander and Rich Swan versus Jack Gallagher and Brian Kendrick. Singles Match. Asuka versus Emma. Alter Ego Match. What? The Demon versus Sister the Abigail. Great pumpkin versus the Transvestite. Transgender. I think it's Tim Curry Transvestite. That's fine. You're wrong. Uh, cruiserweight Championship match. Kalisto defends his title against Enzo Amore. Wins that women's Championship. Raw Women's Championship match. Alexa Bliss defends against Mickey James. And then you have your TLC five on three handicap match. The Shield, consisting of Roman Reigns, Seth Rollins, and Dean Ambrose, taking on The Miz with The Miz Taraj, or just Curtis Axel, Braun Strowman, Kane, Cesaro, and Sheamus. So, let's get into it. First match, Sasha, Sasha Banks versus Alicia Fox. Two extras. Alicia Fox. Alicia Fox. <laughs> I bet she does. Pin submission, count out, or DQ is the first one. And will there be a fight before or after the match? Yes or no? Champion Smitty, advantage, going last? Yeah. Even though his whole card's fucking filled out, he's going last. Because I may make some ed- some make some changes. Sure, I've been making changes this thing all night. Makes sense, Joe. Give me your first winner and the extras. Sasha Banks yeah. submission, no submission and no fight before or after the match. That is correct. All right, Callie. Sasha Pin, yes. Uh, I have Sasha submission, yes. And I actually have Sasha submission. I just changed it to yes before. I told you I was going last. Oh, look at you. Aren't you fucking special? Probably not. <laughs> A little special. No. Special. Slow. Special looking. I was going to say special, what? I was gonna say special ed, but. You're oh. slow. Moving on. <laughs> 205 Live Tag Team. Match. Joe. You know, no, 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 no. You're gonna, if you're going to take the host down. If you're gonna do the you whole heard. thing, you have to you have to go ahead and say the oh, whole thing. Cedric Alexander and Rick Swan. Who? Rich Swan. <laughs> Who the fuck is Rick Swan? Ah! Uh, versus Jack Geller and Brian Kendrick. Uh, for the extras, it's pin submission counter or DQ. Who makes the fall? Who takes the fall? Number of aerial moves plus or minus one. Oh, and then I guess the little advert is any move off the top of the turnbuckle, of the ropes, or over slash through the ropes. <gasps> he spelled through wrong. Yeah, he did. <laughs> he spelled ah, trout. Trout. <laughs> trout. The ropes does not need to connect. Oh, Joe. shit. I got to put those down. Joe. I don't want to read these anymore. Uh, I got uh, Cedric and uh, Swan. <laughs> Rick Swan. Ricky Swan. Ricky Swanny. <laughs> Ricky Swanny boy. Uh, pinfall. Alexander makes the fall. Kendrick takes the fall. Eight aerial maneuvers, plus or minus one. Ooh. Callie. Uh, oh, yeah. Jack and Brian. Went up the hill. To fetch a pail of water. (laughs) Jack came down and bust his crown, and Brian came tumbling after. That wasn't so good. (laughs) Pin. Who makes who makes the fall? Oh, um, Jack. That's not true. But Jack, who takes the fall? It's not Jack. It's not true. But but Jack. Cedric. Number of aerial moves. Oh, eight. You going with eight as well? Why not? All right. I got Cedric and uh, Ricky Swanee <laughs> getting the penny. Oh. <laughs> Ricky the Swan. Ricky the Swan, swan Steamboat. <laughs> Ricky the Swan. <laughs> swan. <laughs> uh, Cedric is going to make the fall. Jack Gallagher is going to take the fall. <sighs> Speaking of, did you guys see that fucking match? The Cruiserweight match on Raw? Did you wa- get the watch or you skipped through Raw? Or two or, two on or Raw. Five. Raw. I didn't watch 205. I did watch 12. The lumbar check that yeah. he gave the oh, yeah, yeah. oh Holy oh, shit, dude. man. Gallagher the sold jack. the fuck dude, out that, of that. I love that move. That move that is move, so good. That move is always good. Yeah. That move is incredible. 
Some of the guys that sell it for him are just great. Yes, agreed. Jack Gallagher being one of them. Yeah. Uh, so Jack, I think Gallagher's going to take the fall. Number of aerial moves, plus or minus one, I have the number of seven. I Jump, picked the black Jack. guys. Okay, so Kendrick and oh Gallagher? No, we're not the black guys. <laughs> okay. Black Irish? No. <laughs> black English? No. Pirish? Pirate and Irish. They're that's Irish. What I, that's, that's what I put on the seat. I put the black guys. <laughs> <laughs> I'll allow it. Uh, they went by pitfall. <laughs> Alexander Pitts, Kendrick, and also have seven oh for the aerial God, moves. I love Twitter. You have how many? Seven aerial moves. Seven aerial moves. Okay. What do you mean you love Twitter? <laughs> oh, what in the stupid 22K18 game? <laughs> Made. Are you talking about all the uh, fake entrances where like the yeah. shield comes out? Is where yeah. it's Roman Reigns coming out with um, who sucks his dick? Come what? on, Smitty. Who sucks whose dick? Roman Reigns' dick. Vince McMahon. Thank you. Comes out on his arm, kisses him. It's great. That's pretty funny. It yeah. So let's go back to what That's we're doing. Life. Uh, singles match: Asuka versus Emma. Two. Match extras, pin submission count under DQ, match time over 10 minutes, bell to bell, yes or no? Joe. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, uh, I'm uh, pretty sure I'm going to pick Asuka. Pretty sure. <laughs> By <laughs> submission. And no, that's not going to go longer than 10. All right. Kelly. Well, my answers are no different. Asuka, submission, and no. I'm going Asuka by pin and no. I can't even think of Asuka's other finisher other than the Asuka kick. lock. It's just a huge, it's just a huge it's fucking roundhouse kick. Okay, so I'm still sticking to my pick then. No, that's fine. Yeah, I have Asuka by sub. I switched this like three times and I'm just going to stick with submission now. I've heard about that about you. <laughs> just keep switching back and forth. And I'm saying no, the match does not go past 10 minutes. All right. Up next, the Alter Ego match. Demon versus Sister Abigail. Three extras, pin submission, counter to DQ. Does Abigail get her own entrance music, yes or no? Oh, Jesus. Does Abigail use Brave Sister Abigail finish, yes or no? Does Abigail use Brave Sister Abigail finish, yes or no? Uh, Joe. I'm going to hit you with me. <laughs> You took my idea. I was going to switch it to that as well. Uh, I'm picking the great pumpkin, Charlie Brown. All right. <laughs> By pinfall. Uh, no, she does not get her own music. And yes, the finisher will be used. Okay. Kelly? I have the not he, she. <laughs> uh, winning by pinfall. No to own music and yes to the finisher. All right. Just for clarification, I had the demon winning. Yep. I have Sister Abigail going over. Fair enough. Uh, Pin. No for her own music. Yes for the finisher. That's a really good extras on that. Good job, Daniel. I agree. I picked the not shim. Um... (laughs) The demon. Okay. <laughs> My pen. No special interest music. And yes, it's Abigail. Joe, what are you laughing at over on the scorecard right now? What What does that even mean? Shim? shim. A she he. She him. A sh- I've him. never heard she that him. before. You never heard shim? No. Oh. Heard shim? Right. <laughs> I'm like, what the fuck is a shim? <laughs> uh, I'm like, is that kind of like some kind of like Jailhouse is that like a shiv, you know, like <laughs> stick someone with? You? I don't know. Hey, yo, that's called the shank, man. Whatever. Shiv too. Shiv. It's a. Sh- it could be a yeah. shiv too. Uh, up next, cruiserweight championship match: Kalisto defending his title against Enzo Amore. Four match extras: pin submission counter DQ. Enzo entrance promo over three minutes. Yes or no? You can see, he got away from the numeros, the numbers, if you will. Of how long his promo is going to be. Uh, number of aerial moves, plus or minus one. And again, with the aerial moves, any move off of the turnbuckle, off the ropes, or over throughout the ropes, does not need to connect. 
Uh, outside interference or distraction, yes or no. Joe, drop the beat, son. Enzo Amore, pinfall. Uh, yes, longer than three minutes. Four aerial maneuvers plus or minus one. And yes, there will be interference. All right. Enzo, pin, no, five, yes. What? Fuck does that mean? Enzo Mori mm-hmm. winning by pinfall. Uh-huh. Enzo's entrance is not going to be over three minutes. Mm-hmm. The number of aerial moves is going to be plus or minus five. And no, yes, there will be outside interference. Thank you. I also have Enzo going over. Uh, definitely by pin. Hmm. He's been pretty consistent with his promos lately. I'm going to go yes. Yes, the promo will go over three minutes. Uh, Number of aerial moves, I'm going to go with three. Uh, Outside interference or distraction, (laughs) fuck yes. Smitey, the douche champ mighty. What are your pills? Uh, I got muscles marinara. Um, Enzo Winning Yeah but we got Muscles Man of Shevitz You got him going over the. He's gonna beat The big bad Beetleborg By pinfall That was fucking funny dude <laughs> like, you He called him a goddamn <laughs> Beetleborg And I was like Nobody says Beetleborgs <laughs> Holy Beetleborg? shit See it's a fucking Old school 90s See, refer- yeah. uh, Television show reference It came on after The Power, Power Rangers, Rangers Cause Power Rangers Got so big That uh, they wanted More Japanese Faux American Teenagers <laughs> And gimmicks thing I love those and So And they use little kids For Beetleborgs Yeah and Beetleborgs that was just so funny. He's like, yo, oversized Beetleborg, you Power Ranger. At least Raymond Steele wore a Louis Vuitton mask. <laughs> right. <laughs> he fucking no, he did. Yeah, he did. Yeah, he did. He did wore, he really? Yeah. Yeah, he wore a Louis Vuitton. The, the Velcro one? One of yes. them, yeah. He's one of them Louis was a Louis Vuitton and Gucci mask. Battleborgs? <laughs> no, really? Beetleborgs. No, Go ahead. Uh, he's going to win by pinfall. Promo, yes. He'll be going over three minutes. Number of uh, area moves, I put four. And yes, outside interference and restriction. All right. Uh, women's championship match. Alexa Bliss defends her title against Mickey James. Three extras in this one. Pin submission count out or DQ. Number of finishers executed plus or minus one. The finishers on this match are the snap DDT or the twisted bliss, the Mickey DDT or the Mick kick. And will there be outside interference or distraction? Yes or no. Joe. Uh, Alexa Bliss will win the match by pinfall. Two finishers, no interference. All right. Callie. Bliss, pinfall, three, and yes to outside. All right. Uh, I have Biscuit Butt herself going over, which is Alexa Bliss. Uh, she will win by pin. Biscuit butt. Yeah, she yeah, that's yeah, butt. that's what Mickey James has referred. She said she's gonna beat. You her didn't watch Raw. Yeah, you, yeah, that, was, that, part. that was last week. If you watch the Hulu version, it also wasn't on this week. It was a backstage segment. Okay, uh, that's, I thought so. Last week it was on something. the main, and the whole crowd started chanting "biscuit butt" to the point where even I tweeted out this week while watching. It, I was like, "So if Naya and Alexa are team rude, does that make Emma and Alexa team biscuit?" Because they both got them biscuit butts. <laughs> uh, so yeah, so she called her a biscuit butt. Because you, can, oh no, I'm not, no, it's, I'm not it's a mom. It was, it, was, it was a true mom Is it joke. What? Uh, no, say it. Uh-oh. Say it. Oh. Say it. Be say inappropriate. Because you could eat that booty. <laughs> oh, you good? That does the fuck out of that salad. Mm, no ranch dressing needed. <laughs> sure, what it tastes good with that added. Maybe yeah, some jelly though. <laughs> Peanut butter jelly asshole some, sandwich. Some syrup. <laughs> so yeah, uh, yeah. He no, first syrup. Two is the number of finishers, oh and God. I have no outside interference or distraction. Smitey the mighty. Uh, I have Little Miss Bliss taking this one, Little defending Miss, her, Miss. defending her, the Wicked Witch of WWE. Yeah. Yep. I remember that still. 
Went by pinfall, two finishers. I switched it from three to two. And no one outside interference or distraction. All right. I had to change that to no. You didn't switch so to I no? I can't think of. I thought I did, but no, it's not going to happen. I'll be very honest. I got a. Nia Jax ain't there. He's not, not there. Not only that, I don't even think if Nia Jax was there, she would go. She would have a part in it. Just for the fact that. I, uh, this is more of Alexa. I still ran through the whole women's division. I got nobody to take on. I did it all by myself, blah, blah, blah. And then Asuka versus Alexa. Um, next is the TLC match. Final match on the card. Five on three handicap match. Roman Reigns, Seth Rollins, and Dean Ambrose. The Shield versus Braun Strowman. The Miz with the Miz, Taraj, Kane, Cesaro, and Sheamus. There are seven match extras. Pin or submission. Who makes the fall? Who takes the fall? And this, look, this still pisses me off. Because it's a TLC match. The whole way to win a TLC match is you climb a ladder like a ladder match. This is stupid to me. But whatever. I'll have to get the fuck over it and be pissed. Uh, Who makes the fall? Who takes the fall? Will there be a fourth superstar added to help the shield? Yes or no. Match moves to backstage area? Yes or no. And again, backstage does not mean the stage. It doesn't mean the crowd. It means behind the scenes. Uh, Number of folding tables destroyed, plus or minus one. Match time, bell to bell, in minutes, plus or minus one. This is some really good fucking extras with this one. I have to give it up to Pro Wrestling Scorecards. Joe, let's have a conversation. Tell me, how do you feel about this TLC match and how everything's going to go about? Yeah. How do I feel about it? How do you feel? Are you happy? Do you like it? I, it could be mildly thrilling. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Give me your pills. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I've got uh, the shield going over <laughs> by pinfall. Roman Reigns will pin Kane, as I said earlier. Uh, there will not be a fourth superstar added to help the shield. Uh, I just, as you started asking me what my picks were, changed uh, this question from yes to no. So I have no for the match moving to the backstage. Did you have? Did you change it because I made mention how it's not including the? No, I just no. I just just thought about it. Yeah. Uh, Folding tables being destroyed. Plus or minus one three. Match time twenty two minutes. Plus or minus one. All right. Kelly, tell me, how do you feel about the GLC match? Uh, well, it could happen. No, not good. It is. Well, you never know what could happen, so. Make it your picks! (laughs) I'd like to make a side note that I don't appreciate your singing. That's fine. Creed (laughs) isn't good. Not you supposed ain't good to be. Either. I know. The shield is going to win this. Could be worse. He could be doing Nickelback. <laughs> he would never, ever, ever sing like it Nickelback. Could be, it could be worse. It's a scenario. That wouldn't. That wouldn't be Mikey. That would be an alien in Mikey's body. That's how we know. <laughs> it just tastes. I hope you get every STD in the book. <laughs> no, that's including the again. Book. Yeah, again. <laughs> <laughs> God damn, I feel like Dan Marino and Ace Ventura. Mm-hmm. That damn Marino. Is out. <laughs> damn. He's a, they, he's a, that damn Marino should die. <laughs> well, I'm going to say this way. That Dan Marino. Uh, pinfall. Yep. Sith. What? Sith? <laughs> Sith Lord. What? Sith. Darth Maul? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Fuck it. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Versus Rick Swan and I was Sith Rollins. <laughs> Sith Rollins. I'm all right with Sith Rollins, dude. I'm okay if he switches his name to Sith Rollins. He comes out, he comes out in a robes. fucking robe all the goddamn time. God, yes. And he has to come out to the Imperial Sith, March. Sith Black. It's better than his current ring gear. Can we tweet him and have him dress up as that for Halloween? Okay, thanks. Sith Rollins. Sith I'm on Rollins. Him. Oh. He, he so, comes out to the Imperial March. Oh. Dun, 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 Miss takes the fall. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, no to the fourth. What was that? <laughs> no. no to the fourth. Yeehaw. 
I hope you catch every STD in the book twice. I already had them. <laughs> Thrice. Good band. Anyway. <laughs> uh, no. To move backstage, four tables and 23 minutes. All right. Plus or minus Joe, one. what was your minutes again? 22. 22. Mm, okay. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hey, Mikey. Mm. Yeah. How do you feel it's about what? Awesome. The match and TLC. It's going to happen. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Make it your PX. I'm going to draw on your face if you don't be <laughs> well, I was going to draw on your face. Draw on Are your you face? trying to come with a southern accent now? No, dude. She's been. She's doing her uh, flight attendant stuff. She had to do some training in Atlanta. So every time she goes to Atlanta for she just comes back with this nice little southern drawl. Like she was just in a little house on the prairie. Oh, man. Her in she's a whole country. Really, really, I don't even know what that means. She's really happy to be around that, Mickey James. That's Mickey James. James's song. Yeah, oh, it is? It is. <laughs> no, she comes out to, hey, Mickey, you're so fine. You're so fine. You blow my mind. I'm a girl. I'm a girl. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> Mikey, make it your prayer. Stop. <laughs> no. I don't know what's worse. I that. picked the shield to win by pin. Romian will pin the miss. <laughs> no to a fourth. No to the batch moving backstage area. How many full? T- you know what? Uh, I'm switching this. Thank I originally God. had four. Five. I'm making five Switched from five for the to tables. Four. So many times. Five is the number of tables to be destroyed. Match time, bell to bell, in minutes. 24. 28. Fair enough. Nope, switching that. <laughs> 29. You win the bell. So. 29. My final pick is 29. Now, Smitty, you stupid little champ. Taking so, the belt off of everybody uh, <laughs> twice. <laughs> How do you feel How about the TLC match? Does yeah. it get your goose riled up? Nah. Doesn't give you a half chub. Nah. I just. Does it give you a no chub? Sounds about right. Make it your pants, bitch. <laughs> well, as the bitch said. <laughs> <laughs> That's you, not me. I'm a bitch. <sighs> I got the shield winning by pin. Reigns will pin the Miz. Okay. There will no be no full no, I'm jumping on my dick with that one, huh? No, I already said the Miz sure, is the, whatever. the fall we had, it, we had this conversation earlier. No. Can you, no. you said it was going to be on Kane, too. No, he said Kane. Yeah, he no, you like Kane. agree no. with the whole He said Kane. Kane. I said Miz is going to take the fall. Continue. <laughs> Continue. Backstage area? Yes, it does. Uh, number you four said yes is going to the backstage area? Okay. Stupid. <laughs> cunt in you. Yeah. What do you say? Yeah, you're a cunt. Continue. <laughs> and then, um, <laughs> t- match that, I got four fucking tables being collapsed. Four? <laughs> okay. And I put 25 minutes. 25 minutes! All right, up next are the announce table, destruction, English, Spanish, other. Uh, obviously, you draw X over which one you think is going to be destroyed. You leave alone, or no, circle the table that will not be destroyed. Joe. I circled English, and I X'd out Spanish and other. Okay. Callie. Yeah, I'm going to go with the same thing. English survives. <laughs> that was okay. Almost not English, but <laughs> that's the only one that survives, by the way. English survives. Lone survivor. I'm a lone survivor. I was going to say, that, ain't there a song about that? I'm a lone survivor. All right. I will survive. Nope. Uh, ruined it. Congratulations. <sighs> what you all pick? I'm circling the English because I believe it will survive. Oh, <gasps> no, I'm Xing the English. 
So I have to. It's a good thing I'm using pencil this time, huh? Because I've made a lot of changes. Yeah. So that's why I decided to go last. I know it's going to make some changes. Uh, English, Spanish will be dead. Other will survive. Champion. Uh, make a your table picks. Got the English surviving, and everything else going. All right. Um, English surviving, everyone, everything else going. All right. Up next are the unscheduled appearances. Uh, five points for each correct name. Maximum of five selections. Teams count as multiple selections. WWE card at 3 p.m. Pacific Standard Time will act as official list. So that means 3 p.m. Pacific Standard Time is 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So if anyone's listening in the Midwest, 6 o'clock, so an hour before the pre-show starts. Um, managers and valets on scorecard do not count, a.k.a. the Miz Taraj is, is, uh, is the only one that's on here. Uh, backstage or live appearances only, no match promo videos or pre-show panel guests, no authority figures, trainers, referees, or announcers. Joe, give me five people. So you, you can't pick Curtis Axel is what you're saying? No. No, because he's part of the mystery. Okay. All right. I got Titus O'Neil, Elias, Drew Gulak, Arya Davari, and Tony Nese. All right. I'm going to tell you this right now. And this is me being your friend. Change Gulak. To what? Okay. Anybody else. Because right now, Drew Gulak has been announced to be a, on the pre-show with his PowerPoint presentation that he's been doing on 205 Live. Uh, I did not know that. Thank you. You're welcome. And that's me being your friend. I'll replace him with Noam Dar. Okay, so what are your five again now? Titus O'Neil. Mm-hmm. Elias. Mm-hmm. Noam Dar. Aria Davari and Tony Nese. All right. Callie. Oh, fuck. Ah, that superstar always gets me. <laughs> uh, Bailey. Titus. Elias. I'll go with niece. Can, can, I, can I make another change? When she's done? Yeah. And I'll just add Carl Anderson. All right. Joe, what's your change? I wanted to trade out Tony Nice for uh, Mustafa Ali. Oh. That's okay. So my five are Titus O'Neil, Elias, Noam Dar, Arya Davari, and Mustafa Ali. Sorry, no more changes. No, that's fine. <sighs> Cause who helps out Enzo who to Enzo? I have Tony Nice, Noam Dar, Elias. Man. Um Shit, man. Davari. And so just one more. This is me. <clears throat> I, it, this was difficult. Yeah, this is probably the hardest part of the card to pick, honestly. Uh, you know what's even weirder? All of the cruiserweights were picking. Yeah, like. 
we said it. Uh, well, Enzo's brought. I mean, yeah, because we picked right to the forefront. Or at least I did anyway. I picked there to be <clears throat> interference in the Enzo Amore Kalisto match. So these guys will come into play there. And now that you told me that Drew Gulak is having his PowerPoint presentation, that makes me think that Mustafa Ali is going to come out. Right. So that's why I changed from Tony Nese to Mustafa Ali. Yeah, I'm going to put Ali out as well. Uh, Ali will be my fifth. So that means Tony Nese, Noam Dar, Elias, uh, Arya Davari, and Mustafa Ali. Uh, my first pick here for unscheduled appearances with Bo one because what he had. I actually put Brock. Brock may show up. Hometown boy. Where? Where is it at? Damn, Minneapolis, Minnesota. Brock lives in Canada. Go ahead. But he's what? a hometown boy over there. That's fine. So uh, I got Mufasa Ali. Who? <laughs> That's what Enzo called him. The Lion King. Okay. He called him Mufasa Ali. Mufasa Ali. <laughs> uh, Tony Nese, Davari, and Noem Dar. All right. That was five? Yeah. Okay. I'll take your word for it. Again, everybody, make sure you go to Pro Wrestling Scorecards, uh, facebook.com slash pwscorecards, at pwscorecards on Twitter and Instagram. And I'm. it looks like they have a Tumblr as well. Uh, patreon.com slash pwscorecards if you guys want to support them in all that they do. Get yourself a scorecard. Go to their Google Drive. Download it for yourself. See what your points are, man. Right now, we have Joe in the lead with 110 points, followed up by me with 107, Callie with 106, 96 for uh, Orlando. Smitty is way at the back end with 88, and... 47 or something like that for Z for his winning the the ability to win so he's like super behind but he has 107 points on his regular picks so therefore doesn't look like he's gonna lose unless he fucking takes a complete shit on the bed or doesn't turn in his picks or doesn't turn in his picks as well because right now we're waiting on Orlando and Z to give us their picks Uh, Z special picks will be up before uh, before TLC at some point on Sunday, will we get them up? Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for listening. We really appreciate it. Again, follow us on all of our social media, facebook.com slash BDRcast, Twitter, Instagram, Periscope, BDRcast. Make sure, if you guys want to show some love, buy some of our merch, merch man. We got it on ProWrestlingTees.com slash BDRcast. Uh, also, if you guys want to show us a little bit of love, feel free to go to our Patreon, patreon.com slash BDRcast. That's P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com slash BDRcast. For a little as a dollar a month, you can show your love to the ring crew here for everything that we are doing. You show that you like it, and it gives us more of a love of doing it ourselves. Guys, thank you so much for listening. We really appreciate it. We are your ring crew. Armbar. Smitey. Cali. And me, the almighty one. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you again. Can't tell you how much we want you to listen. Love it. ProWrestlingTees.com slash BDRCast. We are out.